still play the harmonica. Look at that. Yeah, I'm back. It's kind of working for me. I like it. I think you should. I think you should stick. That's nice. I like that. Yeah, don't definitely stick with that one. Yeah. Should, yeah, I, should, I, get, should I get my spoons me. out though and spoon them? Yeah, along we could like do that. You know, with the well, the cowbell board. maybe. You know, cowbell, cowbell and harmonica that duo. Might, that might kind of work. I think know? so. That might. That might. I, I hear you play an instrument, Mr. Sam. Yeah, yeah, I play a couple. I used to be a music major. Actually. I, I know you're like the real deal. Yeah. I just sort of uh, play one on TV or whatever it is, <laughs> right? That's hey, right. folks. I, I'm I'm a full time science nerd now. Yeah, we ought to be science nerds speaking to you live from Colorado. Embrace your inner nerd. Yes, indeed. We are your nerds, and we can draw pictures of people because we are nerds. Okay, Geekland. Okay. That was weird. We should probably do some chemistry now. Okay, so we're... All right, here we go. <laughs> Podcast 5.2. Hey, we yep. got four topics today. I do guess law. Guess to chemistry, Dalton's law, and the real gases, mm. as opposed to the fake ones. Yes, so you mean the you ideal You can't ones. have the fake gases. No fake gases. Fake gases do not work very well. Nope. Okay. All right. Hey, ideal gas mm. law. Hey, we're going to drive that today. Okay. Where do you get the ideal gas? Well, it comes from a combination of uh, the combined gas law, and we throw uh, the Avogadro component, which happens to be the moles, in with it. It's actually this is actually a uh, this is the ideal gas law written in its true or not the idea. Pardon me. This is the combined, combined gas, gas law, law written actually as it actually is. Yes. Oftentimes we, we ignore the in because the moles are kept. Yeah, we usually down. don't change the moles unless you're you know blowing up a balloon or a tire or something so like that. So this is the actual form of the combined gas law. Yes. So if we take this and we basically rearrange it, we can solve. For yeah. It. What we're going to do is the with, with the combined gas law, we have changes taking place. The pressure changes, the volume changes, the temperature changes, things like that. But when we deal with the the ideal gas law, there are no changes. We're dealing with what are these measurements at a particular set of conditions. That's correct. So what we're essentially doing is we're leaving one side of the equation constant and we're going to uh, we're going to see what the numbers are on the other side of the equation. So the side we remain constant, we're going to call that R. Yeah, so, so the new pressure will be one atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And the new volume, let's talk about that for a second. Let's do the temperature. That's easier. The temperature, we like to say 273 uh, Kelvin. Kelvin. That's zero Celsius. Zero Celsius. And then for the um, volume, you might recall from some uh, other life or something, mm. there's 22.4 liters in one mole. Yes, and that That's is standard temperature at standard temperature pressure. pressure, which is one atmosphere and 273 Kelvin. So if I write 22.4 liters here mm -hmm. and then one mole here, yeah. we then take this term right here on the right side. And if we take our calculator and we mm -hmm. take one times 22.4 divided by 273, you get a number you may be familiar with. Point zero eight two one or two zero six, yeah. And that is liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. Now this is a I like to call this is a famous number. It is very famous. It is like the famous people on the T V. It is a famous number and we get famous number special letter. Yes. What is the letter? R. That is R. So if we then Big say R. Big R, not little R. We then say PV over NT. We lose the numbers. Why do we lose those numbers anyway? Well, we're only dealing with one set of conditions. They're not changing. Yeah, so PV over NT equals R is the ideal gas law. Now, yes. if you rearrange it, we get the most important gas law of all. PV equals NRT. Or I like to say PIVNERT. Nert. Kind of like nerd. Kind of, Kinda, yeah, PIVNERT. PIVNERT, or NERT. Yeah, there we go. So this is the PIVNERT equation. That's the ideal gas law. And so that's how that's where it came from. So it's yeah. actually not a new gas law. It's just a derivation of another gas mm -hmm. law. Hey, remember Wilson? I remember Wilson. Yeah, Wilson He's our funny looking from balloon. From our uh, Stranded movie or whatever that was. The I Tom can't remember Hanks what movie? it was called. I have a strange story. Shipwrecked or... Ask me about the story in class. Okay, there's a story about Wilson. Yeah. Okay. What's so the movie? Just a weird, weird thing that happened to me the night I saw that movie. Oh, okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so Wilson is filled with oxygen gas. So let's draw. I like pictures, Mr. Sam. I, I do, too. I just don't draw them well. That's why you have the pen. Yeah, so there's Wilson. There he is. What do we know about Wilson? Blue, he's a he has a volume of three and a quarter liters. He's at 22 Celsius. Notice how I label this with T. 
Now is that okay? Nope. Calvin, 295. To add 273, and that adds to 95. Okay, we do that. And it's asking, we have a P, uh, the pressure. Yes. The pressure is 0 0.75 atmospheres. And by the way, we didn't say this back here. Let's just say that for just a moment. So if we look back here, I was going to say it's very important, this is in liters, atmospheres, and moles, Kelvin, that when you work with the ideal gas law, that your pressure unit you know, must be in ATMs, your temperature must be in Kelvin, and your volume must be in liters. That's in order to use that value for R. Yeah, there's other There values. are others, but we'll use this one primarily, mostly because that's the one you're going to find on the AP test. Indeed. Okay, and now it's saying what's in. Actually, is it Actually, kind of good? Well, it wants to know what the grams are, but if we find N, which is moles, we can easily find grams because so grams to moles is an easy conversion. It's a simple equation. P yep. equals NRT. You're going to solve for N. Once you know N, you do have one additional step. Yep. So I like to just plug it in. Now, you plug can solve in. this uh, algebraically with the PV equals NRT and solve for N individually. So you can say N is PV over RT. I've just rearranged and solved for N. Yep. Or I like to just put it straight in a line. So, um, I'm going to get a blank screen here. I'm going to say P, which was 0 0.75 atmosphere. Uh -huh. atmosphere? 0 0.75. And yep. the volume was 3 and a quarter 3 liters. 3.25. And that is equal to N times 0 0.0821. We'll round that to 1 instead of uh, 06. Kay. And that's a liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin times the temperature, 295. which is 295. Got to scrunch it in yeah. there. And then if you divide both sides by the 0.75 and the 3 and a quarter, now just push divide, divide on your calculator. I think we've talked about this. 0.75 and 3.25. You get we your moles. You get 9.94 moles. Pretty large number of moles. 9.94 moles of, now what was the chemical we were working with? Uh, oxygen, I believe. Now, actually, another important thing to say about this particular gas law is that it is a gas law. This only applies to gases. Now, if I want to convert this to grams, I simply just use the molar mass. One mole of oxygen is equal to 32 uh, yeah. <laughs> grams of oxygen. Brain fart there. And we get what? A big number. Uh, 318 grams. 318 grams of oxygen. That's a lot of oxygen. That's a lot of oxygen. Okay. But that's the answer to that problem. Very that's simple. Um, and sometimes you're asked to solve for different things. This is uh, we don't need to belabor this. You guys are probably going, oh, this is this is easy compared to the last chapter stuff. No. Hey, gas stoichiometry. What if I have a problem that involves stoichiometry and gases? Hey, there's a set of rules. First of all, you need to have a balanced equation. It's a stoichiometry problem after all. If you have stoichiometry, you must, you must have a balanced equation. Have a balanced equation. The equation is unbalanced. Don't try to do it without it. Yeah, don't try this at home. Actually, you should try this Do at home, try it at home. But you should not try it without the balanced equation. No, never. All right, never. label what you know and what you don't know. Then you're going to use the Pivnert guy or in then dimensional analysis or vice versa. The best way to do these problems is to uh, uh, do them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> This let's is do just one. a practice one. So let's uh, just do a couple of problems. I think we got two examples here. Hey, we got a, a equation. Potassium chloride, KCl3, decomposes and to produce solid potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Hey, that looks like information we can get a balanced equation. I think we should start with a balanced equation. What do you think? I think so. Potassium chloride. Now, how do we do potassium chloride? Now, potassium has a charge of K positive 1. Chloride is Cl... O3. O3. Charge, charge negative 1. And hey, that adds up to a nice easy norm. So it's going to be KClO3. And it says it breaks apart into solid potassium chloride. Yep. Now, when you do potassium chloride, Chloride, of course, is Cl negative 1. So when you put the potassium with the chloride, KCl. it's simply KCl. And oxygen gas, of course, is O2. Balance. So now we're going to balance that. Now the O's aren't quite balanced. Nope. So after 3 here, yep. 2 here, yep. and 2 here. Yep. Now what do I know? We know that we have a temperature of 40 degrees Celsius. Now it's temperature of what? What are we going to put that in there? Oh, uh, it's, it's gas. the temperature of, sorry, we want to know some information about the oxygen. The question says what volume in liters of oxygen gas Measured at 40 Celsius, right, 655 millimeters of mercury, so that's nope. our pressure. I'll say tor, that same thing, right? Uh-huh. Uh, will be produced when 13.5 grams of potassium chlorate is decomposed. Now, folks, it's important to understand that what I'm doing here is I have labeled the problem, and underneath my oxygen here, I've written down the conditions related to the oxygen. Yes. I've also done a little equal sign because I, of course, want to convert to Kelvin. Right. And what can I find here? It says what volume in liters is what we're looking so for. So volume, I'm going to write V That's equals our question mark. 
And if you look at this equation right here, this is like PV equals NRT. So but I'm missing, missing what? Missing what we're missing an N. So N is actually um, missing as well. So I, have, I can't solve the problem of two variables. No. So, so I have to use this number here. Yes, that number there is going to help us find N of oxygen because you can always convert grams into moles of one thing and then do a mole ratio to get moles of another thing. So if I have grams of one, I can then convert to moles of the other. Don't convert to grams of the other. That's confusing. There's 122. 0.5 grams of potassium chloride. This is the molar mass of potassium did chloride. Did you just know that off the top of your head? I did. Yes. I'm just cranking in my calculator and I'm looking down thinking, wait, how did you know that? Because I... It's amazing! And you've been doing this for a while. I've done this a few years and I actually know that one. Why? I know that it's actually dementedly sick, I think. But oh well. Is that a word? Dementedly? Dementedly? I don't know. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. All right. Now that's... I just converted the moles of potassium chloride. I've got moles. I'm good, right? Um, no, no, no. That's moles of potassium chlorate. We want moles of oxygen. Notice the N is the moles of oxygen, ladies and gentlemen. Different Common mistake. Mole People ratio. must then say multiply by three moles of oxygen to two moles of the potassium chlorate. Now, do you know the answer off the top of your head? That is going to be approximately 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.2 something. No, you're close. You're 0 0.165. Not bad. 0.165. Moles, moles of, of oxygen. oxygen. Now that number can then be put in here, yep. which is exactly what I'm going to do, 0. Not zero, 0. 0.165 moles. Now we have PV equals NRT, and we know everything except, well, for V. V. Okay, so I'm going to read, actually, let's figure this out. The temperature is 40 Celsius, uh -huh. so that would be 313, did that right? Uh, yep. 313 Kelvin. And then to get to the tors to the atmospheres, I'll take 760 tor in one atmosphere. 0 0.862. 0 0.862 atmospheres. Got those in your head, Mr. Sanders? I do. I've got them on my calculator. Okay, too. so um, PV equals NRT. This is 0 0.862 atmospheres. Uh-huh. We're looking the for volume. The volume is my variable, X, if you will. The number of moles was 0 0.165. It was. Times R. Which is always 0 0.0821. 0.0821. I won't put the units because I'm going to run out of space here. And Temperature 313. 313. I knew that. And so then we divide both sides by 0.862. They cancel on this side, and the volume equals. Right, Mr. Sams is busily typing into his calculator so it gets the correct answer for us all. 0.8. Well, hopefully it's correct. Yeah. All right, it's uh, 4.92. 4.92 liters. That seems like a reasonable value. I can go with that answer. That seems totally reasonable. We have one more example with this gas stoic. We have a problem. And guess what? I even gave you the equation. How nice was I? That's but pretty nice. But it's a little bit different. But so it's not balanced. It's not balanced. And so what the equation was, P4, no, no P, just P, plus O2, P205, uh, diphosphorus, Pentoxide. Pentoxide. So when I balance this, mm. um, you always start with the most complex one. Now, yeah. but I see we have an oxygen issue. Yep. So if I put a two here, that gives me ten oxygens. So that gives me a five, five here and a four and a four here. There it is. Now what do I know? Uh, this question says how many grams of P2O5 are produced. So that's what we're looking for. I wrote that grams question mark. When 82.54 milliliters of oxygen. 82.54 milliliters. At 6,000 Kelvin. Is that hot? That's pretty toasty. That's quite toasty. And 45 atmospheres. Oh, my word. That's, that's very good. high pressure, too. This it's completely consumed. Okay. So we now, I like to think of this. This is P. Uh, this is no, T. No, that's not P. This is V. There you go. <laughs> this is T. And this is P. Okay. We what always we know find? R. So R, we can find N. R, check, we know that. So we can find N. So in this case, we'll do this business over here secondarily. Yep. So we're going to do PV equals NRT. Now, volume is 82.54 milliliter. Now, hopefully, uh, I'm not going to show the dimensions on this, but if you are trying to convert for milliliters to liters, what do you do? Divide by 1,000. So that would be 0 0.08254 liters, because they have to be mm -hmm. liters. That's in Kelvin, so Good. check, we like that. That's in atmospheres, check. Check. So I am Plug going and to chug in the ideal gas law. Do P.